Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. Hey man, we're here talking about Section 22 of D160, Lightning Induced Transient Susceptibility, aka Induced Lightning. Um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about pin injection in this video. Now during this test, we're going to inject a transient waveform on each pin of your EUT to determine the damage tolerance of the internal circuitry. The purpose of this test is to simulate the energy from a lightning strike that's going to be induced onto your cable and seen at each pin of your product. Now the categories for section 22 consist of six characters. The first two call out the pin injection waveform set and test levels. The second set or the third and fourth characters refer to the single and multiple stroke waveform set and level. And finally the last two characters determine the multiple burst waveform set and multiple burst level. In this example, we see that B3 is the waveform set and level. F4 is the single stroke and multiple stroke waveform set and level, with L3 being the multiple burst waveform set and level. Since we're testing to B3 for pin injection, we'll be testing to the B waveform set. This includes waveform 3 and 5A. You can see that at level 3, waveform 3 is 600 volts and 24 amps. Waveform 5 is at 300 volts and 300 amps. Now if you're wondering how waveform sets are selected, you're going to want to watch the video that I made for D160 Section 22 Cable Bundle. Now that we got the test levels and waveforms nailed down, let's talk about the calibration. Typically there's one of two methods used. Direct injection, where the power is applied directly to the line under test or cable induction method. This method uses a coupling transformer to inject the power needed. Using either method, we need to achieve both the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. First, what you're gonna do is put your circuit in the open circuit configuration and ramp up the transient generator until you hit the voltage level specified by your category. Also make sure that your timing requirements for your waveform are correct. Next, with the same generator setting, put your circuit in the short circuit configuration and make sure you achieve the short circuit current. Once you achieve both open circuit voltage and the short circuit current and the timing requirements applicable to your waveform, you're ready to test on your EUT. It's worth noting that special configurations need to be considered for test setups that require power pins to be tested with power applied. These are noted in figures 2210 through 2212 of D160. Power should be applied to the EUT except when only passive components are present and power applied to these passive components are not relevant to the test. The test setup for pin injection is real simple. You'll need a breakout cable that exposes all your aircraft pin connections to preferably banana jacks. This should be less than 5 centimeters long. You'll apply power to the EUT if your EUT is more than just a passive device. The generator will be set up in the method used during calibration and to the calibration test level. This example shows the direct injection method. The test engineer will inject the pre-calibrated waveform and level on each pin 10 times in the positive polarity and 10 times in the negative polarity. Since your EUT is powered but not operational, additional modes of operation are not required. Unlike cable bundle, this is a damage tolerance test. Ensure that there's no arcing during the test by monitoring the current seen by the applied waveform. Once the waveforms have been applied, run a functional test on the spot or an ATP to ensure your EUT is operational and has not been affected by the test. And that's one half of D160 Section 22 Pin Injection. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.